Hi folks, let's machine this microorganism piece. The, the folks over at Tools Today that we've done some videos for before wanted to know if we could machine it. It was an STL file that has uh, 600,000 faces or facets to it and it's definitely something I don't normally do both the file type but also just the general machining strategy and, and the outcome. I'm going to talk through some of the things we learned, the CAM strategies, how we set this part up, how you can make it. So we relied too much on 3D adaptive strategies. I really fell in love with this strategy when I started using HSM Works and now Fusion 360 because it does such a good job of maintaining constant chip load, which is really, really helpful and a very powerful toolpath strategy. It can pre prevent you from breaking tools. It can give you a better service finish. It can really help you uh, dial in your machine, whether it's a really small benchtop machine or a huge uh, factory machine. The problem is it's an incredibly computing powerful, uh, or it takes a lot of computing power to do it. And I learned why uh, when I was talking to some of the folks at Autodesk University, and I may, I may botch some of the exact specifics or lingo here, but basically it creates a solid model in the background for every pass or every so often, and then it does like a comparison, like a before and an after. So it creates a little bit of toolpath erodes that away, creates a solid model, does more, and then it compares how much was removed versus how much it thought it removed. So it's sort of sort of like iterative and it's it's almost it's like a brute force method, which is really cool. And you know, computers nowadays can, can do a lot of that stuff really quickly. But the the model here, I was doing a 3D adaptive toolpath with a uh, one millimeter, that's about forty thousandths ball end mill for the final pass and I had to let my computer do the cam rendering overnight. It was like 12 hours. And hey, if you need to do that, that's okay. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but uh, we're gonna, you're gonna see here, you can generate a morphed spiral toolpath in li literally seconds. And that's what's also really cool. So how do we make this part? We've got a chunk of 360 brass free machining, should be really nice. We're definitely using the 440 because we've got the 10,000 Spin, uh, 10,000 RPM spindle. To start out, we'll use tool number 51402 from Tools Today. It's a single flute quarter inch end mill. We'll use that to just rough out the stock around the piece of brass we've got. And then we'll use RC3400. It's a four flute, uh, about two and a half inch face mill. It'll give us a really nice finish over the top of the part. And then we're gonna come in 3 16th inch ball end mill. And here you can see we can really hog out a lot of material. Now I, I'm doing adaptive roughings here and I like to I like to do them in two different passes. It's the same operation. In the first pass I'm going a little slower, 20 inches a minute, and but I, I'm taking a little bit more uh, of a step over here, about 75 thou and a more generous depth of cut. I kind of want to use it as a roughing hogging out operation. And then I'm duplicating that same tool, we're going a little faster and we're taking a much finer step over. We're still leaving two thou of radial and axial because remember, the uh, adaptive roughing strategies aren't finishing strategies and sometimes they can actually, I don't wanna say cut corners, but uh, they're not meant to, to hug the exact perfect end contour. So you do wanna do a finishing type pass. We're switching here to a tapered 1 16th inch carbide end mill. We'll use that to, uh, to come in and again, we're just trying to remove that material out as we get to progressively smaller bits. Now here's a really good question is, I, I like the adaptive roughing strategy because I feel like it helps me ensure I'm not going to plunge that tool into a bunch of uncut material and potentially chip load it or break it or just uh, impact a you know, negative surface finish because again we had some deflection because we pushed it in too far. So that's the attractive thing. This one though has taken a few minutes to um, to calculate. So I'm okay with that, but it's starting to get that point where it's inefficient. 10,000 RPMs, 21 inches a minute, and we're going to do 30,000 step over and just uh, and up to um, no more than 0.1 inch step down if it can, but we'll, the fine step down will be 0.01 inches here. And you can see pretty cool toolpath when you look at it. And you can now see all those little triangles around the part, right? Um, we'll come back and look at a simulation here in a second. And here you can see the 0.01 inch step downs that I was referring to. So 
it'll go down as far as 0.1 inch. I'll pull this back up here. If it can, but if it starts to see taper, it'll say, okay, well, the, the operator doesn't want me to go more than 0.01 so that I can make those stair steps as small as, as again, I want to here at 0.01 inches. But it's obviously not going to create stair steps or go down 0.01 if it's a straight wall up and down. And then finally, we'll do a morphed spiral. I love this tool path. Now, how did I pick more spiral? Well, I wish I had done this whole thing in Fusion 360. Apparently, Fusion 360 can't quite handle the STL file yet, but it definitely can handle the CAM side. So I'm hoping that they'll get the STL side uh, sort of uh, up. But I actually used Fusion 360 because they have the great hover over pop-ups. And if you just go down through the various CAM operations, you'll see morphed spiral. This strategy generally provides a much smoother toolpath than scalp and is very useful when machining freeform or organic surfaces. I can't think of a better example of an organic surface. This literally, somehow, uh, the folks at Tools Today had this made from a microorganism, like some biological thing. It kind of looks to me like a moon crater. It's kind of a cool part though. And so, more spiral it is. We're going to do the first one with that same 1 16th inch end mill. And God, it's just beautiful the way it hugs it uh, and goes over that and it generates very quickly. And then the last strategy we'll do is the same morph spiral, but with the, this one millimeter or about 40 thousandths ball end mill from Tools Today, part number 46471. All this info is in the video description below. And holy cow, folks, look at this tool path. Isn't this beautiful? And what's cool, is we can use stock simulation as a really helpful tool, but let's look at just the regular simulation and we can see, hopefully it'll work okay here with the um, graphics card. So I'll slow it down and let's change the tool path to just show a tail. And if you slow it down a little more, you can really see, we zoom in, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You can just watch it going over and you can see just how fine a detail uh, this part is. We take a look at our stock simulation. Again, it's a bummer that uh, the screen recording software really makes it difficult to run smooth. What I wanted to emphasize though is you see the colors here and they correspond to the operation. So you can actually watch the part be formed and you can see what operation took material away and you can see at the end, you know, for instance, the cleanup end mill didn't have to go where the bigger end mills uh, earlier could cut everything sufficiently. So here you're starting to see the purple. I wish you could see more easily. It'll describe it here on the left, I guess. The yeah, you can see the morph spiral. So here's the second to last operation. This is the one sixteenth end mill in that sort of ugly, you know, pea soup color. And then the last one will be a green color, which is the morph on the one millimeter ball mill. And so you can see here, it doesn't have to cut everywhere. It just has to cut where, uh, uh, or it's not cutting additional material away, I guess you should say. Um, because again, some of the bigger areas, the whole tool could get to. So with that, folks, I hope you learned something. So sit back, relax, enjoy some footage of cutting this brass part here on the Tormach 440.